at the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke, which we looked at. Uh, so today we're going to talk, continue talking about soul winning, uh, but we are going to focus on the, as it pertains to fear, because I believe that there is great fear that is released over the world now. The Bible says this, it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. That's the book of Romans. So then faith comes by Romans chapter 10. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. What you hear will induce something in you. What you hear too much of, what you put your ears to, to too much of, it will induce something in you. There are a lot of people today who are panicking. There's a pandemic that is true. There's a pandemic. There's a, a disease called uh, coronavirus that is going around. It's a pandem pandemic. It's been declared a pandemic. But it is also induced pandemonium in people's hearts. People are afraid. People are fearful. Now there is what they call healthy caution. And I'm all for caution, 100%. Let us do healthy caution. And it's important to be cautious. It's important to, to, to have precautions, to take precautions, praise God. But when it goes from precautions to fear, it is not of God. It is not healthy. Are you hearing me, somebody? Uh, amen. God has not given us the spirit of fear. He has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. And when fear comes in, it paralyzes. When fear comes in, it paralyzes. It torments. It has torments. It torments people. So I said, let's go to the book of Luke. And we will begin from Luke chapter number 10. Luke chapter 10. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 10 verse 1 says, After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city. Into every city and place where he himself was about to go. And we have thought about this passage here and we are still looking at it, but we've talked about it. We've said that every place where God sends you is a place where he himself intends to go. So when God sends us, he sends us as extensions of his kingdom. So he sent them out two by two into every city and every place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest truly is great. And that, that, that statement does not change with the changing times. The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And he says, we should pray. But you not end there, verse number three, he says, Go your way. When you finish praying, you go. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. I'm not sending you out in a place where you're going to, where, where everything is fine. But I'm sending you out as lambs among wolves. Wolves are constantly trying to destroy lambs, to take advantage of lambs, to wreak havoc upon lambs. And Jesus said, I've sent you out. Into places where, yes, you, you, your safety may not be guaranteed. But I'm with you always. Amen. Who is your safety? God is. I said God is. Why are we so afraid of death? It is appointed unto man once to die and after death judgment. If you die, you go to be with Christ. What, what is the problem anyway? Except you are not sure of your salvation. We should stop acting like the world where we, we, we have, a, we have a, a destination that we're going to. Praise God. Again, like I say, again, we, we tamper it with, with, with caution should be on the side of everything. But don't become afraid. Go your way, behold, I send you out as wolves, as lambs among wolves. You are not a wolf, you are a lamb. I send you out as lambs among wolves. It says, carry neither money, money back, Namsak, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. So it's saying this that, you know, your provision is in the place of your labor. It's in the place of your work, your provision. No matter what job you have, that job is not your source. It is a channel of income. Are you hearing me, somebody? I said, no matter what job you have, it is not your source. It better not be your source. Because the moment when you put your trust in that thing, it becomes your God. No matter what job you have, no matter what skills you have, it is not your source. 
And so when the channel closes, in this time, when the channel closes, there are many more channels that will open. You see, water has a way of forcing its way through. No matter how much you build a, 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 a dam to dump that water, it will flow. It will find a new path, a path of least resistance. Amen. So for those of you whose jobs are at stake, or for those of you who, you know, your money, your, your, your money source is beginning to, they're telling you not to do this, and you're not sure how you're going to pay your bills. Don't worry. Put your trust in God. Those who put their trust in God are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved. He said, Pastor, you are only saying it, that is theory. How does it affect me practical? I don't know. But all I know is that I live it. Are you hearing me, somebody? He says, carry neither money bag. How can he be sending you on a mission where you need money? Then he says, don't carry money. He particularly gives a command. Why? Because he wants us to depend on him, not on man. He wants us to depend on him, not on a system. Praise God. Knapsack no sandals and greet no one along the road. Verse 5. But whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. Now, now, I want you to think about this. He said, whatever house you enter, say peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will remain. So, if you enter a place and fear is there, if a son of fear is there, you know what happens? Fear remains. It attracts fear. You can be a carrier of peace and you can take peace to every place. And peace is not the absence of war. It's not the absence of turmoil. Peace is that stillness. It's God preserving you, keeping you in perfect peace. Whose eyes are stayed on him. It is that presence of God, the calming presence of God in the raging sea. When you enter a place, say peace to this house. And if the son of peace is there, let it be with you. I'm just trying to, let me read this because we'll talk about all of this. But I'm going somewhere with this. And if the son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. And if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give you. For the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. Stop jumping from here to there looking for what is not lost. Whatever city you enter there and they receive you, eat such things as they set before you. Verse 9. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 9. Let's read verse 9 together. And. Hallelujah. Let's read verse 9 again. One, two, go. And say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. The evidence of the kingdom of God is when you can become a solution to those who are devastated. The evidence of the kingdom of God is when you carry the healing power of God to those who are sick. He says, you heal the sick. He did not say, I, Jesus, will come and heal the sick. He says, you, I have sent you out. You heal the sick. How can you heal the sick if all you are doing is you are afraid? You see, if somebody comes down for some people to lay hands on them because of coronavirus, no contact. They will not. Or somebody comes to you, it's an emergency. What you do is, did you visit anywhere first? So by the time you, 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 you have already imbibed fear in you, all you're doing is focusing on sickness and, and disease. I, I was going to cut my hair I was with somebody. I was going to cut my hair and uh, and, and the person said, please don't go cut your hair. Make sure that they sterilize this. I said, just like you are speaking, what you are speaking now is fear. Fear has entered you on everything you are so conscious about just how transmission, tra that's what you're conscious of. And we laughed about it. But I've thought about it more and more and it's true. Because why? We, we constantly listen, 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 listen on all the things, the Everything that is going on, and we have not listened to what does say the Lord. What is God saying? What is God saying to the church? He's saying the same thing that he has said before. You heal the sick. There. And say to them who are sick, say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Amen. We are appointed to be the extensions. Of the kingdom of God. Let me ask you a question. Can you imagine Jesus or the apostles in this time and this age? 
in this time and this age, Jesus not or say Jesus will now say, Oh, all crusades are cancelled. You put just stay home. Coronavirus, don't, don't don't come. I know we were supposed to have a crusade somewhere, but you put don't come. Just just stay home. Now, now, you know, can you imagine that's what Jesus will do, right? Okay, what about Apostle Paul? He will say, Well, please, you know, there is now please. I'm not trying to say I'm not an extremist. I don't believe in extremes. I believe in caution. I believe in let's heed the advice of the scientists and follow what they give. But what I'm also saying is don't panic. Don't be one in panic. Hoarding food and hoarding all of this and all of that, it will finish. I'll see when it finishes whether you will not go out to go look for more food. That's if you have money to hoard all the food. You go and take a loan to go buy 60 cases of water. Very unreasonable fear. There is fear that is credible. But there's one that is unreasonable. And even the credible fear itself does not stand the test of the word of God. Amen. I know this message will not get a lot of amens today, but don't worry. We'll we'll go through it. We'll finish. He says, and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the very dust of your city, which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, notice that the kingdom of God has come near you. But I say to you that it will be more tolerable in in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe to you, Corazin, woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Ty and in Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Ty and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capanon, and all of that, all of that. But now let's go to verse 17. Because he sent them out. Let's see what the results were. Verse 17, he says, Then the 70 who were sent out, they returned with joy. Hallelujah. They returned with joy. Joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. They returned with great results. They returned with joy because they went out in obedience to Jesus and then they come back with a report to him. And their report was surprising because they they were not talking about healings here. They said, Lord, we, we saw healings happen. But it says, even the demons are subject to us in what? In your name, because we do not go in our own names, we do not go in our own powers, we do not go in our own strength. We are going in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah. And when we go out in his name, he is backing us always. Lord, I am with you always to the end of age. So they came back and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Have you gone out in the name of Jesus? Or what are you going out in the name? What are you acting on? Are you acting on the word of God? Are you acting in the name of Jesus? Let's go verse 18. I know we've read this before. And he said to them, I saw Satan. He confirmed to them. He said, before I sent you out, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Let me ask you a question. When did Satan fall? Did Satan fall when they went out? No. Satan had fallen a long time ago. So Jesus was sending them out to go into a field to go fight an enemy that is already defeated, a defeated foe. So when they came back and said, even the demons are subject to us in your name, he says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven a long time ago. Then he says this, he said, behold, I give you the authority. To trample on serpents and scorpions. And over all. Somebody say all. We've been given authority to trample over all. The power of the enemy. And nothing. And nothing. And nothing. Shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's what you have. You have authority. Now imagine you go to a place and somebody who has authority, they are talking, they are taking like a dog that is afraid and they are running and hiding. You have authority. He says, behold, I have given you authority. Praise God. Over all powers of the devil. Over scorpions. Over serpents. 
We are not going around looking for scorpions. That's where foolishness comes from. We are not going around. I'm not saying we go around looking for serpents and scorpions. But if you held it without knowing, you don't panic because why? You've been given power over it. Amen. I know there are preachers. I know some people like what well, pastor you're saying. We should go around looking for scorpions. That's not what I'm saying. There are people who go around carrying snakes that God has given them power over snakes. And then they get beat by it and they die. That is foolishness. But Jesus is saying this. If you are out somewhere and there was a scorpion between you and the assignment that I've given you. Or it tries to come against you or it bites you or a serpent it stings you. No, you shall not be afraid. Media team, go back to verse 19. Time will not permit me to show you everything in scripture. But Apostle Paul knew the truth of this word. And in the book of Acts, he went to a, an island called uh, Malta. They were sailing and their ship, they had a shipwreck. And he went to an island called Malta. And as they were gathering wood to warm themselves with fire. He was gathering wood. And then he carried this wood to put in the fire. And a serpent came out of the wood and beat him. He came out and it lashed on his hand. And the Bible says the people of that place was expecting for Paul to die. Paul did not go out looking for snakes. The snakes came out looking for him. But yet he had some power. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says, but he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. He did what? He shook off. He shook off. Somebody say, shake off. Shake off. Oh, you didn't hear me. So for those of you who are in the medical field, whether you're a nurse, you're a doctor, as you go to the hospital, what you're doing is you are practicing your profession. You don't go there and be afraid. They bring a patient. You've taken all your precautions and you go in. When you're done, you shake off. Anything that has lashed on me that should not be, I shake it off in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't go in and everybody's afraid. Who's going to go? Who's going to go? Who's going to go? And then you become too afraid. You're hiding behind the unbeliever. You've been telling them, I have Jesus in me. They're afraid to enter the room. This nurse said, well, no, I'm not going to that station. It's not my patient. And you too, you just begin to hide behind them. Where is your God? You have been telling them about God all the time so that your God was fake. No, where are the masks that they have given you? Where everything they have given you? Enter that room and lay hands on the sick. At that moment, the hospital policy, they will allow you to pray. Because they don't, they have been defiled. Ask them, can I pray? Say yes. You pray for them. When you don't pray, you say, anything that is trying to lash on my body, I shake you off as I take off these things. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Put back that axe up. Put back that axe up. I want to show you something. And, and this is scientific. This is scientifically proven. Do you know that in the island of Malta, there is no poisonous, venomous serpent? And, you know, we live in the advent of Google. You can live from here. Go search. Go, go and search and search engines. But the Bible says, but he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. So if you back up a little bit, go back to verse, let's just begin from verse uh, 2 in that Acts. And the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire. Okay, let's begin with verse 1. Now when they had escaped, they found out that the island was called Malta. Two. And the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. Verse 4. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, the, whom though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow him to live. <laughs> but he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. Verse 6. However, they were, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, they changed what? Their minds. They changed their minds and said what? And said he was a God. They changed their minds. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that those natives will have an on... Because if you go down, you read the science, like I've said, they'll tell you, well, 
those snakes there, they are not venomous and all of those, all of those, all of those things. Do you think that these natives were not familiar with the serpents there? For them to have been expecting Paul to fall down dead is because they have seen other people falling down dead. When they didn't see anything, they changed their minds. May God, may people change their minds concerning you. They changed their minds and said that he was a God. That is divinity at work in you. Oh, I know some of you are looking at me like, Pastor, what did you say? It's heresy. It's not heresy. There is divinity. The he who has me has life. That life is called Zoe, uncreated life. Life that cannot be destroyed. He who has me has life. He who receives me has life. There's divinity at work in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He shook it off into the fire. So let's go back to Acts chapter 10 verse 19. He said, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power. Somebody say all. Over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Then verse 20 he says this, just in case you think that that is the greatest miracle. He said, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this. That the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. There is a bigger miracle than healing. And you have the bigger miracle and you received it by faith. Hallelujah. Can you imagine if you could receive salvation by faith? How come the rest of the things are smaller? Healings are smaller than salvation. He said, nevertheless, don't rejoice because the demons are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Verse number 21. Let's read on. We're going somewhere. In that hour, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Go and study your whole Bible. You will not find these things very common, this statement. The Bible says, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise, from the prudent, and revealed them to babes. Who are babes? Babes are people who trust. Children who trust their parents. If they are standing on a hill or if they are standing somewhere, they say, Daddy, I want to jump. They will just jump. Because why? They trust that you will catch them. You know, some of us Christians, we are too wise. We are too prudent. We cannot trust God. If, if God says jump, you say, but the, the ground is a little far. He says, jump, I got you. He said, no, no, Lord, there is a stairway. I need to go take the stairway. He says, no, jump, I got you. And Jesus rejoiced because the wise and the prudent didn't get it, but the babes got it. He rejoiced in the spirit because now they have finally caught it. Are you catching it, somebody? Oh, hallelujah. He says, and reveal them to babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in your sight. Verse 21. 22. We're going somewhere. He says, and all things have been delivered to me by my Father. And no one knows who the Son is except the Father. And who the Father is except the Son. And the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately. This is a private meeting. He turned to them and said privately, not publicly. He said, blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. Oh, when you look at this and you look at verse 21. The Bible says, at that hour Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. You know when a father all of a sudden realized that his children, has, his children have grown to maturity. He turned around. He began to smile in his heart. He rejoiced because they have caught it. He rejoiced because they have received it. He rejoiced because they have understood what they carry. Then he turned to them. He says, blessed are the eyes will see what you see. Then see what verse 24 says. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired. That word desired means they have asked for permission. They have sought earnestly. They have desired to see what you see and have not seen it. And to hear what you hear and have not heard it. Can you imagine prophet Elijah was in this hour? Then he'll be running head tasket. They say coronavirus is here. He'll be taking some, some people here. If they permitted you now, you would have taken flights to go to where there is no, no, no infection anywhere. You are monitoring 100%. We should monitor. I'm not saying don't monitor. Monitor. It's now in Tulsa. Panicking starts in Tulsa. Hey, Tulsa is very small. Where, uh, where did they go from? Hey, uh, 
children, where did you come from? All this and that. None of these diseases. None of these diseases shall hurt you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You cannot minister to a dying world if you yourself are filled with fear. You cannot. It's impossible. You cannot represent a God who is a God of faith if everything that is working with you is fear and head knowledge, head knowledge, head knowledge. You got to be led by the Spirit of God. And there are times when the Spirit of God will lead you to pull back. There are times when the Spirit of God will lead you to go out. Not that the news, not the news all the time leading you. you led by the news, the news, the news, the news. No, what says the Lord? What is the Lord saying? Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Exodus 23, 25. Exodus 23, 25. Just encourage you with scriptures. Exodus 23, 25. Exodus 23, 25 says this, and you shall serve the Lord your God and I will bless your bread. So you shall serve the Lord your God, 23 verse 25. So you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water. So you shall serve the Lord your God. The Lord, whose God? Your God. And he will bless what? Your bread. What you eat. And your water. What you drink. Then he says, I will take sickness away from the midst of you. I, God. He promises. He said, I will take it away. If it is in the midst of you, I will take it away. You shall serve the Lord your God. Serve the Lord. Just serving him alone gives you a guarantee. He said, you shall serve the Lord your God and I will bless what you eat and I will bless what you drink. And I will take away sickness from the midst of you. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. He's given us a promise. Given us a promise. He will take away sickness from the midst of us. Hallelujah. Let's go to Exodus chapter 15, beginning from verse number 22. Exodus chapter 15, verse 22. Moses was leading the children of Israel, and they came to a certain place. He was leading them out of Egypt. They came to a certain place. The Bible says, so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out into the wilderness of shore. Now, the wilderness is where there is, there is patched. People are dry. They are thirsty. They went into the wilderness of shore. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Say with me, a desperate situation. It's more desperate than Corona. They're in the wilderness where it is dry land, they are thirsty, they are parched. That can kill. Thirst can kill more than any virus can kill you. Yes. Because your body is made up 70% water. And that's why we drink water to rehydrate. So dehydration will kill you faster. They went three days in the wilderness. They were sweating and they found no water. The Bible says in verse 23, Now when they came to Mara, they could not drink the water. So when they finally found water, the water seemed poisonous. They could not drink the waters of Mara for they were bitter. They were poisoned. They were not testing good. They were not good to the soul. They were not good to the spirit. They were not good to the mouth. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And the people complained against Moses saying, what shall we drink? It's been three days. We have not found water. Finally, when we found one, it is poisoned. What shall we drink? And that's how some people are holding on to God. How do we function? Some of you are like, Lord, how do I pay my bills? They've called me to not come to work again. How do I leave, Lord? Why is coronavirus... I was driving, I was driving yesterday, normally on Saturdays, there are certain streets you don't want to drive on in Tulsa. Because people are going to the mall and everywhere is shot. I was driving and my car was just going. I couldn't even see traffic. All of a sudden, I realized, what's going on? Even to drive now in your own car? In your own car? Did the virus just come airborne? I just come and enter your car and it's waiting for you there. I will see how you stay in your house. If fear is what is going to grip you. So the Bible says they cried out. The Bible says they cried out to the Lord. Hallelujah. So when we face adverse situations, what do we do? We don't just go to fear. We cry out to the Lord. So they cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree. The Lord did what? He gave them direction. The Lord showed him a tree and when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Then he made a statue and an ordinance for them and there he tested them. Whenever these situations come up, God is looking at you. 
he's testing you, he's looking at you. I'm not saying God sent it as a test, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is when they come up, God is testing, where is your trust? He's looking, what do you have faith in? Where is your trust? Do you trust me or do you trust what is out there? The virus is already killing, that is true. It is already spreading, that is true. So do you trust the virus more than you trust God? So he tested them and he said to them, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandment and keep all his stature. Hear what he says. I, God, will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. I will not allow these diseases to come upon you. They may go on other people, but they will not come on you. For I am your healer. Hallelujah. For I am your healer. Say with me, God is my healer. Hallelujah. He is our healer. He will not put any sickness, any disease on us. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith comes by hearing. Now, some of you, since you came in here now, you know, you came in today just because of obedience. Or just because, of, you know, religious duty. You had to come to church. Since you came in here now, you've been hearing this. That fear that was in you, some of you, it is living. Or it has left a little bit. Until you go back home now and turn to news. And you start seeing on this side, dead people dead. Oh, breaking news. Coronavirus, breaking news, breaking news. It has been breaking a long time ago. Breaking news. <laughs> and then they make one sound. Breaking news. On this side, breaking news. Breaking news. And before you know it, your heart is breaking. With every breaking news. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. He said, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. I am the Lord who heals you. Hallelujah. He will not allow it. The Bible says, with your eyes, you will see it. But it shall not come near you. Let's go to Psalm 91. To begin to wrap up. I know Pastor Esther read that Psalm 91 for us uh, before I came in. Oh, as I was coming, Psalm 91, beginning from verse number 1. Psalm 91. He says, it is good to give thanks. No, no, that's Psalm 92. See what he says in Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of coronavirus. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So where are you dwelling? The the Hallelujah. Amen. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. Abide means to remain. Abide shall remain under the shadow of the Almighty. Now hear me. Apostle Paul the Bar I mean, Peter, the Bible says in the book of Acts that there were a lot of sick people that came out on the streets. So much so that Peter could not lay hands on them, but when he passed, his shadow alone healed them. He did not command his shadow to heal them, but his shadow alone healed them. And if the shadow of Peter, Peter who was once afraid and ran, Peter who was once afraid and refused that he knew Jesus, if the shadow of this Peter unconsciously could heal people, and the Bible says you will abide under the shadow of the Almighty, that's what the scripture says to you and I. He shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Can you imagine what the shadow of the Almighty will do for you? Verse 2. I will say of the Lord. Can you say that? I will say of the Lord. I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Let's read that together. Want to go? I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. Just hold on right there. You know, this thing is so interesting. And the place where fear really comes when it is, when it is magnified. Now, thank God for information. There should be information disseminated by the news. But when it is magnified, then people start being afraid. So, uh, yesterday, somebody in a third world country wrote to me. I said, Pastor, how are you doing 
with that virus in America. And I'm wondering, I, now, out of concern, just checking, good concern, but I was, so the way he said it, he was praying for me, is I'm praying for you guys, that you guys will overcome. I, 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 I thought about it a little bit, and I laughed. At least, I live in a country where there is public health infrastructure that functions. Where you are living, there is no public health infrastructure, or that it is next to none. <laughs> so if it was to enter there, and which it has already been found there, it would devastate you more, and you are praying for me. But now, I all of a sudden realized why he was praying. Because why? He's been seeing American news a lot. And he's not seeing the news where he is. Just hold on, let me ask you a question. Some of you, you've been lived here for, in Tulsa. You've lived here for about five years to seven years to ten years to twelve years. If, when you were in other states, what did they call Tulsa? Tornado Alley. Sometimes they would talk so much, you would go and buy tornado things and equip it, buy food and put, then the food expires, you go and remove, buy this, buy that. Now, I'm not saying, for the years that I've lived here, I've never seen tornado come near my house. I'm not saying that my house, that tornado cannot come, it can come in one day. It may not come in 10 years, but it can come in one day. Take precautions, get tornado. I have, when I bought the house, the added advantage that came to it was that the person who was living there had built a tornado shelter at the back. I've never entered there. <laughs> now, at least I know it is there. So when people watch news sometimes, they'll tell me, Pastor, are you safe? I said, Tornado is killing people in Tennessee. Do you know Tornado has killed people in Tennessee this, this, this month? But all they're hearing is Tulsa. It's Tornado Alley. I said, no, what you're doing is you're watching, you're watching something different. At least look objectively. You will find out that where you are, and you're trying to tell me, sorry, there are people who have died near you of Tornado. There is no place. Where there is safety guaranteed. Is it in California? There are wildfires. Is it in Florida? There are sinkholes. Hurricanes. Cyclones. Where, wherever you are, there is something coming. So you must put your trust in God. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. The word fortress is a military barracks. That's why you begin to hear they say Fort Myers, Fort Gibson, Fort this, Fort that. It is a place where the military has built a fort. A, a bastion of protection. And that's where they fight from. That's where they have all the ammunition. That's where they sit, they strategize, they go to defend the territory. And God is your fortress. He is your military bastion. He is your base of protection. Hallelujah. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And from the perilous pestilence. Perilous pestilence. Verse 4, let's go on media team. Mediate him, help me. Verse 4. He shall cover you with his feathers. And under his wings you shall take refuge. Under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Hold on right there. His truth shall be what? Your shield and buckler. Does truth have power to protect? Yes. And what is the truth? It is what the Lord is saying. His truth. The word of God is truth. He says, his truth shall be your shield. It will be your line of defense and your buckler. It will be what holds you together. Hallelujah. Verse 5. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Hold on. It didn't say there is no terror. That's not what it is saying. It says there is terror by night. And there are arrows that fly by the day. That's what it says. But it says, even though that is a reality, more real is that your God is strong. So you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. You shall not be afraid. Fear shall not take hold of your heart. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. So by night when you are sleeping, when you are unconscious, there is terror. At the daytime when you are not seeing, when the light is shining so bright, there are arrows that are flying. That's why you can just see somebody walking through the day, all of a sudden, bah, they have a heart attack. Now what happened? Arrow has hit them. An arrow of heart attack. 
He said, you shall not be afraid. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Let's go on. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You shall not be afraid of those. Not of the pestilence that walketh in darkness. <laughs> that walks in darkness. This is a defense. This is a... This virus is something that is defenseless. That people don't see it. It's walking in darkness. It just goes on. You don't even know where it is. You wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. You don't touch your nose. The one person that you don't wash your hands, they just sneeze by you. Pam! Comes. So people get paranoid. <laughs> True. You wash your hands. The one time when you are tired, that you do not wash your hands. Somebody who do not wash their hands, they just come with it and touch. And you don't even realize. Take precautions, but don't trust in the precautions. Trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, not of the pestilence that walks in darkness, not of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Hallelujah. A thousand a thousand, a thousand shall fall at your side. You know, some people have just heard that some people have died. And then they are afraid. <laughs> they heard in China, people died. In America, 44 has died. It's not even reached 100 yet. 44 or 40 something has died. He said, hey, pastor, am I going to be next? Pastor, I need to be, I need to be careful. He said, a thousand, that is the word of the Lord. You will see them. A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Hallelujah. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Only with your eyes. You will see it on the news. You will look and see it. You will hear it is happening here. You will hear it is happening this way. But you will not, it will not come near you. Amen. Verse 9 says, Because you have met the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague. Come near your dwelling. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who do you put your trust in? In this word or in what you're hearing? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Fear comes by hearing and hearing by the news that is spreading around. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Listen to the news. When you finish, take your Bible and read. Whose report shall you believe? Listen to the news. Listen, get information. Get information. Get the information that you need to take precautions. But when you are done all of that, take your Bible and read. You function by certain, a certain different set of rules. Amen. Amen. He said, for he shall do, do what? He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in some of your ways. No, some. When you are flying, that's when the angels charge over you. But when coronavirus is coming around, he cannot protect you. No, he will give his angels charge over you in all your ways. In all your ways. In all your ways. You are going around functioning and doing your normal thing. He will give his angels charge over you. Let me ask you a question. Do you see angels? No, they are invisible beings. Now, sometimes they will, in, they will come in the face of, sometimes they will take on the form of man. Sometimes they will take forms that you can see. But the angels that are charged over you, you don't see them. Do you know that there are angels sitting here in this room? And some of you still don't even believe it. You don't even believe that one, that basic one. Jesus said what? Suffer not the little ones to come to, because they are angels always stand before the face of my father. They are angels. Suffer not the little ones. Let me ask you a question. Do you, did you lose your angels simply because you grew up? No. In fact, when your assignment increased, the number of angels assigned to you increased. So here in this church, 
there are angels here. That they don't leave. They are here. They are assigned to this work. To living with the international church. It's a pastor that's here. They say, no. You are come unto Mount Zion. To the source of George men made perfect. To the, to, the, to, the, to the assembly of innumerable angels. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? You are come. So when you gather, when there's a gathering, Jesus said, be where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. So Jesus is here. Now imagine that Jesus is sitting next to you and you're there. Hey, hey, Pastor, do this thing. Oh, let's go. Do Let's go. You know, we should not sit together for more than one hour because uh, somebody ca- might have sneezed. You know, they, they, they say the gestation period or whatever period it is, it is for, for 14 days. So, uh, Pastor, you know, we could be here and there could be somebody. I hear all of that news. I hear all of that. None of these diseases shall come near you. None. He said, I'll give angels charge over you and in their hands they shall bear you. Lease you, dash your foot against the stone. He will give you angels. He said, you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample on the foot. Hallelujah. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. He will call upon me and I will answer him. This is God now speaking to you. He said, because you have set your love upon me, I will deliver you and I will set you on high. He said, because you have known his name. He said, you will call upon him and he will answer you and he will be with us in times of trouble. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life. Oh, hallelujah. First, see the guarantee. He says, he says, I will be with you in trouble. So when trouble is increasing, know that he is with you. With long life. Verse 16, I will satisfy him. And show me his salvation. With long life. Somebody say, with long life. With long life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Rosalind, are you here? With long life. Yes, with long life. Amen. Yes. Don't travel with long life. He will satisfy you and show you his goodness. Amen. When you go to your place of work and you're working and you're there with long life, take on that guarantee. He's giving you guarantee. You're doing your duty. Praise God. With long life, he will satisfy us and show us his goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has guaranteed us satisfaction. He's given us satisfaction with long life. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give you praise, Father. Thank you. Do you know God has not given us the spirit of fear? He's not given us the spirit of fear. He's not. He's not given us the spirit of fear. Not at all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Second Timothy chapter one, verse six and seven. Then we will close there. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 6 and 7. Verse 6 says this. Therefore I remind you to stir up. Tell somebody stir up. stir up. When you stir up it means that there is something in there. It's just like somebody who has black coffee. And you've put sugar inside. And you're drinking the coffee and it's bitter. What do you do? Stir up, stir up. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Stir up, stir up. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. Hallelujah. Fear is a spirit. God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. My mind is sound. 
I have power at work in me. I am walking in love, not in offense. Hallelujah. You know, there are people who will be offended by this message that I'm preaching right now. The pastor is not taking charge of reality. You know, what you say is they'll tell you all the birds that there is. Bird, bird, bird. The CDC said, thank God for the CDC. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. You have power in you. There is power that is in you. The Bible says in that hour, Jesus turned and he rejoiced in the spirit. And he said, I thank you, Father, for you've hidden these things from the wise and the prudent and you've revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for it pleased you. Babes are ones who may be despised, but he's revealed as a revelation. Then he says to them, he says, even prophets and kings have longed to hear the things you hear and to see the things you see, and they have not seen it. They have longed, they have desired, they have sought earnestly to be in this time, in this day, in this age. For me to live is Christ and die is gain. Amen. We're not going to allow something to paralyze us. When, this, when it's all said and done, we'll come out strong. Amen. And then when it's all said and done, we will come out strong. None of you will be lost. I'm praying for you daily. And none of you will be infected. I'm praying for you daily. Amen. It shall not come near your dwelling. Hallelujah. None of your loved ones. And if peradventure it does come, it will go as it came. Amen. Amen. Our God is faithful. He's a faithful God. He was taking us through the plagues. He's taking us through the fire. No wonder the psalmist says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies came up against me, my foes to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Psalm 27. Therefore, I shall not be afraid of 10,000 of people who have gathered themselves round around me. He said, one thing have I desired, and that will I seek for. I may dwell in the house of the Lord and inquire in his temple and behold the beauty of my Lord all the days of my life. For in the times of darkness, in the times of trouble, he will hide me. He will shield me, this pavilion. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures. Hallelujah. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. Thank you, Lord Jesus. No wonder the psalmist says that he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. So when I see opposition around me, what I'm looking for is, where is the table, Lord? Not where is the place. Let me run and hide. Where is the table? Will you rise to your feet this morning? Let's speak some words. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they overcame him by the word of the, by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimony. And they were not afraid. And they loved not their lives unto the death. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Thank you, Lord. This word of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein. Day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then you will make your way prosperous and have good success. Don't be afraid. That's what the Bible promises us. Don't be afraid. None of these diseases shall come near you. None. None. Because I am the Lord that he led thee. Yes, none. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say to your neighbor, shake it off. Shake off the fear. Shake off the virus. Shake off every disease. Oh, hallelujah. Now, hear me. Don't only shake off coronavirus because you are afraid of corona. Don't shake off coronavirus and leave the blood pressure that has been dealing with you for a long time. Don't shake corona and leave headache that has been dealing with you. So, as we say, shake off. Shake off everything. Anything in you that is not of God, shake it off. Shake it off into the fire. Shake it off. Shake it off. Hallelujah. Somebody lift up your voice and begin to speak. Begin to speak over your life. Begin to declare his goodness. Declare his faithfulness. Declare his glory. Father, we thank you. Shade Brahantega. Legrado Sota Bahaya. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth of your word, oh God. Hallelujah to you. Shade Embangesia. We thank you for your presence, Lord. 
for your power in you we trust Lord God in you we trust you are our light and our salvation whom shall we praise him Lord you are the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid I thank you Lord I thank you Lord by the blood of the Lamb I'm overcome I have overcome I am an overcomer I am an, an overcomer I am an overcomer I am an overcomer the Lord is my strength the Lord is my strength the Lord is my strength the Lord is the strength of my life yay shatabaha la grede beheta suteya mantelegre susa vevede ketabaha la grede besham sebene kaboho vobre ketabaha vegele baha lobro kodobo shoho sobokodo kobo shabaha we give you praise, we give you glory, Lord. Sunta baya hata. La krabana bobo shaya. Mantele breke na baha. Sumeke ne baha. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Job chapter 3, verse 25. Job 